1956, Wilkes County 160, from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia, at en.wikipedia.org, recorded on September 12, 2019. Section 1, Background. Section 2, Race Report. Section 3, Finishing Order. Section 4, Timeline. The 1956 Wilkes County 160 was a NASCAR Grand National Series, now Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series, event that was held on April 8, 1956 at North Wilkesboro Speedway in North Wilkesboro, North Carolina. Section 1. Background. North Wilkesboro carried a reputation as one of the fastest short tracks in auto racing in the late 1940s and 1950s. In 1950, speeds reached 73 miles per hour at the track, compared to the next fastest short track, Charlotte Speedway, where top speeds only reached 66 miles per hour. Most of the fans in the early years of the sport saw the track as notorious for being a great venue to watch races between the legendary racers of the time. Racing at North Wilkesboro was intense and physical. In 1950, Wilkes 200 was the second Grand National Series race held at North Wilkesboro Speedway. 26 cars entered the race. 21-year-old Fireball Roberts qualified with a lap speed of 73.266 miles per hour on the dirt track for his first ever Grand National Pole, but engine problems dropped him out of the running. Fonte Flock started in the third position and led the most laps in the race with 104, but engine troubles also ended his day. Ultimately. Leon Sales led eight of the 200 laps to become the victor, the fourth NASCAR driver to win an event in his debut race. Jack Smith finished second after leading 55 laps in the race. After hosting only one NASCAR event in 1949 and one in 1950, the track began running two Grand National Series events per year in 1951 except for 1956 when only one race was held, the track was being prepared for pavement. One race was held in the spring, normally in late March or early April, and another was held in the fall, normally in late September or early October. In 1957, owner Enoch Stanley had the 5th 8th mile track paved. The Wilkes 200 in 1952 turned into a battle between brothers. Two sets of brothers competed in the race, and they took the top four spots at the finish. The Flock brothers, Fonte Flock and Tim Flock, were strong, but the Thomas brothers, Herb Thomas and Donald Thomas, had a better outcome. Herb Thomas, driving his 1952 fabulous Hudson Hornet, won the pole, led 192 of the 200 laps, and grabbed the victory. Fonte Flock led the first eight laps and finished the race second. Donald Thomas, also in a 1952 fabulous Hudson Hornet, finished third, and Tim Flock finished fourth. Eleven of the 27 cars entered in the race finished. Six of the top nine positions were driving Hudson Hornets. Herb Thomas started on the pole for the 1953 Wilkes 200 with his record-setting qualifying speed of 78.424 miles per hour on the dirt surface. Outside pole sitter Tom Flock led the first 100 laps before experiencing engine problems. Curtis Turner took the lead on lap 101 and continued the lead until his car also succumbed to engine troubles nine laps later. Thomas, in his number 92 Hudson Hornet, only led 18 laps in the race, but ended the race by taking his third consecutive win at North Wilkesboro. Starting from the third spot, Dick Rathman led 70 laps and finished behind Herb Thomas. Fonte Flock managed to work his way up from the fourth starting position to the front and led 
three laps before dropping back and finishing third. Pole sitter Buck Baker ran 78.288 miles per hour to gap the pole for the 1953 Wilkes 160. Baker ran strong and led the most laps in the race with 80 out front before falling back into the sixth position at the finish. Speedy Thomas led 25 laps and Fonty Flock led 37. Curtis Turner led a total of 18 laps. At the end of the race, Thompson finished two laps ahead of second place Flock. Thompson's win ended Herb Thomas and his Hudson Hornets three race winning streak at North Wilkesboro. At the 1954 Wilkes County 160, Gober Sozaby won the pole with a lap speed of 78.698 miles per hour. Sozaby led a race high 112 laps, but finished in 12th position, eight laps down. The only other leader was Dick Rathman, who led 48 laps. Rathman blew a tire while leading with three laps to go and still managed to finish and win the race. Herb Thomas finished some 20 seconds behind in second place. In the 1954 Wilkes 160, Herschel McGriff won the pole position with a qualifying speed of 77.612 miles per hour. He and Dick Rathman were the only leaders of the race. McGriff led 74 laps and Rathman led 83. The race was called three laps early because of a serious crash involving Lou Figaro. His car flipped and the roof caved in. Figaro was transported to a hospital in Winston-Salem, but he died the following day from a skull fracture and brain damage suffered in the crash. McGriff was declared the winner. It was his final victory and his last Grand National race for 17 years. Dink Widenhouse won his only career Grand National Series pole at the 1955 Wilkes County 160, but engine problems forced him out of the race. Outside pole sitter Buck Baker led all 160 laps, but the last lap. Dick Ratham was glued to Baker's bumper, still charging. Rathman's final charge off of turn four came up three feet short of stealing the victory. It was the closest finish in series history up to that time. Local native Junior Johnson ran in his first Grand National race at North Wilkesboro. Section 2. Race Report The attendance at the race reached 7,500 people, and the race was held in a matter of one hour, 24 minutes and 28 seconds. There were 160 laps done at a 0.265 mile dirt track, with the total distance of the race being 100 miles. The average speed was 71.034 miles per hour, and the pole position speed was considered to be 78.37 miles per hour. The top 10 finishers of the race were Tim Flock, Billy Myers, Jim Paschel, Herb Thomas, Ralph Moody, Dink Widenhouse, Alan Adkins, Lee Petty, Bill Blair, and Whitey Norman. Some other notable racers were Fireball Roberts, Buck Baker, Gwyn Staley, Junior Johnson, and Tiny Lund. Dick Beatty, who finished 12th place in the race, would go on to become the top cop in NASCAR decades later, passing a rule requiring vehicles to pass on the right on the restart. Out of the 29 competitors for this race, 13 race car drivers failed to finish, leaving 16 drivers that ended up completing the entire 160 laps of the race. The most common problem was the piston. After racing, the top prize was $1,100, and the prize for last place was $0. Due to the niche status of the sport at the time, This event was completely untelevised and could only be seen either live or through local radio. NASCAR's then current prize structure only gave out money rewards from 1st place to 20th place. All other finishers did not receive any prize winnings at all. Several models of automobile participated in the race, including Ford, Chevrolet, 
Pontiac, Dodge, Mercury, and Plymouth. This was the only race for North Wilkesboro Speedway in the entire 1956 season. Carl Cakehafer was the only notable crew chief to attend this race. He was also the owner of the 300C Chevrolet vehicle driven by Buck Baker. Racing numbers in this era were not limited to double-digit numbers. There were a couple of drivers with triple-digit numbers and even a driver using the letter X as his race car number. Fortunately, this practice was discarded by NASCAR after the 1963 Sand Lapper 200, where Frank Warren would take his single-lettered car to the 13th place finish after starting in 18th. Section 2.1, Qualifying. Please see Wikipedia for the qualifying results. Section 3, Finishing Order. Please see Wikipedia for a full list of the finishing order. Section 4, Timeline. Start of race. Junior Johnson started the race with the pole position. Lap 13, Engine troubles gave Harvey Henderson a last place finish. Lap 17, a problematic piston ended Junior Johnson's hopes of winning the race. Lap 18, Speedy Thompson takes over the lead from Junior Johnson. Lap 22, Johnny Allen had a terminal crash. Lap 38, drive shaft problems ended Fireball Roberts' race weekend. Lap 45, A tire came loose off Ralph Liggery's vehicle. Lap 83, Lou Spears' car managed to overheat itself, making him accept the 23rd place finish. Lap 93, Jimmy Llewellyn's engine gave up, forcing him to accept a less than stellar finish. Lap 102, John McVitie's fuel pump developed problems, causing him to leave the event. Lap 112, a frame came loose off Rex White's vehicle. Lap 115, Tim Flock takes over the lead from Speedy Thompson. Lap 127, Speedy Thompson has a faulty gas line in his vehicle, making him leave the race early. Lap 133, Joe Eubanks had some troubles with his vehicle's axle, causing him to settle for a 17th place finish. Lap 134, Gwyn Staley's vehicle developed transmission problems, forcing him out of the race. Finish. Tim Flock was officially declared the winner of the event. For all four references and external links, please check the article on Wikipedia at en.wikipedia.org. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike License. Available at creativecommons.org.